What's going on, everybody? Welcome or welcome back to the You Tell Me Football Podcast. My name is Anthony. This is... Jinty. Hello. Yeah, I had to go the other way. The last time <laughs> you were over here, I had to point the other uh, way. Anyway, so this is Jinty. We're so glad to be back with you. Uh, Jinty has had a little bit of some laryngitis stuff. I'm fighting a little bit of a cold, so if I sound deep and a little sexier than I usually do, <laughs> just want to let you know that's why. Uh, but today, we have a very exciting and fun guest. He's got a YouTube channel called Beat the First Man. He's a Leeds United fan, and he'll be the first to tell you it's a football show, but it's meant to give you a laugh. And there's a few different segments that he does that we'll get to in, in a little bit. Without further ado, Reedy, thank you so much for being on our show. How are you? Oh, no problem at all, gents. And just for everyone at home, I'm absolutely fine. I've got no illness. I don't <laughs> want any illness. No. You, <laughs> no, you, all good, mate. All good. Uh, a little bit a little bit sweaty, but, you know, I think we're yes. probably all in the same boat in the UK at the moment. So it's, it's all right. good. Yeah. We'll take sweaty with no snot. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so, Reedy, we are connecting with you. I know you and I tried once already. We had some technical difficulties. Everyone who's watching knows my technical difficulties. So, uh, tell us a little bit about your footballing star story, how you started in Scotland and ended up following Leeds United. So I was born in Paisley, just outside Glasgow, as Ginty will know very well, is the, uh, is the hub of uh, central Scotland is Paisley. It's, uh, it's a beautiful town. Hmm. Um, <laughs> I, don't know what, I don't know what Paisley you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> um, my dad was a massive St Mirren fan, huge St Mirren fan, and, and I kind of naturally followed them but we, we moved down to England when I was about six years old mm -hmm. and of course all the guys down here we we're all sporting English teams they said well you need an English team I said well I don't have one I you know I'm Scottish and I support St Mirren and they said well this lad came into school and said tomorrow I'm going to bring you a scarf and you can support them I said, okay and he, he brought me in a lead scarf and uh, that was it uh, 40 four years ago and yeah. uh, I'm, I've been stuck with them ever since and if you really <laughs> gave me the scarf they got relegated out of the top flight back in the 70s. <laughs> oh, so there you go. It started so well. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, that is crazy. And and the other thing of this too, right? I mean, Leeds is a roller coaster of a story when you think about all the things that they've gone through, the financial troubles, premiership, Bielsa's there. Uh, what is it like supporting Leeds United? At the moment, it's absolutely bloody fantastic. Yeah, right. <laughs> However, <laughs> it's been oh, it's been crazy. It's been absolutely crazy. I mean, yeah. who would have thought we went on the journey we went on to get to the semi-finals of the Champions League, mm -hmm. to crashing down to League One, to right. almost going. I don't think people outside of the Leeds bubble realised quite how close we were to going under and, and folding mm -hmm. completely. It literally was a case of hours. Um, wow. and, and you know to, to where we are now as a, a well-run club yeah you know guys off the field who clearly know what they're doing yep. clearly have got a plan in place you know they're, they're bringing in guys from we've got the guys from the 49ers have now come on board to, yep. to help them grow the the off-field activities yeah and it's just and, and of course we've got god in charge so that's right it doesn't, it doesn't really get much better <laughs> <laughs> well that's exactly right i remember when <clears throat> we were trying to connect the first time i was saying it seems like he has this cult like following and i asked if you have drank the kool-aid uh what what's it like you know seeing him work and seeing how he works with those players the best thing about him is, he, is it, I just think he gets it and he gets mm -hmm. the clubs that he goes to. So when he first came to it, it's, it's not, this is not a new story. I'm not telling right. people anything new, but it, the first thing he did is he got the players picking up litter for three or four mm -hmm. hours at the training ground. Mm -hmm. And he said, that's how hard your you average supporter works for three or four hours just yeah. to get a ticket to come and watch you play. And, and he got people bought into his philosophy, he got yeah. people bought into the club. We went the first game of the season when he, his first game in charge against yep. Stoke. So Stoke had just been relegated. We'd finished 15th in the championship. Mm -hmm. He had mm -hmm. 10 of the players in that starting lineup that had finished the previous season so badly. Yeah. Um, and suddenly we were watching this football. And we we're like, what, what the hell is this? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, they, they, these guys, they're, they're not going to survive. They're never going to get through till Christmas playing at this yeah. pace. It was just, yeah. But, it's phenomenal. I mean, I'm. Totally. I'll, I'll be honest. When we took him on, I was a little skeptical, thinking, mm. "How is it going to work?" We'd right. all heard the burnout stories. Yeah, totally. Was all... I was going to ask about that. Yeah, like, have, have you, uh, under the three seasons that he's been there, have you have you noticed any like the? Because I obviously I don't follow every Premier League club or Champions League club religiously, so I haven't get to see this uh, Bielsa burnout that they talk about. Have you noticed it? 
creep in at any stage during the three seasons he's there? The first season in the championship, I, I mean, people called it burnout. I don't think it was. I just think mentally they hit the wall. We've been trying for 14 years to go up. Yeah. And I just think the players mentally hit a wall. They were so close. Yeah. And I just think mentally they hit the wall. But actually, in a way, it was the best thing that ever happened because mm. the next season, you just knew when they got in front, they were not hitting that wall. Yeah. And yeah, we, we ran away with the last, I think we won the last seven games of the season in the championship. Mm -hmm. Last year in the Premier League, first year in the Premier League, we won the last six games of the season. Right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the season actually ended probably two or three weeks too soon to be true right. the way it was going. So totally. I think it's I think he has had spells with, you know, Bilbao. He's had the, the problem where it, it, they ran out of steam at the end of the season. Yeah. But I think with us, he I don't I haven't seen it as of yet. Sure. I will add a little caveat that we've not been playing in European football. And if yeah. we were to be in that. Perhaps totally. there would be potential for a bit of fall away, but as of yet, no, nothing at all. Yeah. Total myth. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, what was the uh, what was the transition like from his? Because uh, I, I remember when I was looking up Yelsa, because obviously when he was first coming in, it was a bit before my time when he was uh, prominent. Uh, well, I was, I was quite young. Sorry. Uh, the thing is that he has the famous like his formation, you know, his old formation, and he adapted it like. Was that a smooth transition? And do you feel like it was that he could still do his old, you know, adaptation? It, it was quite mad because he was, he's really, he's quite, although he's very fluid and, and the team are very fluid, he's very quite rigid in what he does. You know, yeah. if the team plays one up front, we'll play four at the back. If they play two up front, he'll play three at the back. And he's very rigid in what he does with that. And, and the commentators sort of, they lose sight of that and say, oh, Leeds have changed to three at the back. They are adapting, but we've been doing it for three seasons. So yeah. He's very mm -hmm. rigid in what he does there. Mm -hmm. The biggest thing for me is that the man-for-man -man marking across the pitch is just unbelievable. You suddenly see the left back in the right corner of the pitch marking his man. And, you know, Bamford is back on the halfway line tracking his wow. man. The, the fluidity mm -hmm. is is crazy and it's... It's difficult to yeah. replicate, I would imagine, if someone tries. Because he, totally. he used to do it, was that a 3 3 1 3? And then it's now, he's now played like a, a 4 1 4 1, isn't it? Really? Yeah, he's tended to play that more. Um, we have done the 3 1 3 3 a few times. And I think if we ever go three at the back, he does tend to do that. Sure. Um, but it's, I mean, it's just, it's crackers. It's just yeah. crazy to watch. And, and it's so exciting. It really is. Yeah. Um, well, he's never, he, never say he die. Is what yeah, it and he did like it that just... last year. I mean, he got a lot. We got a lot of stick in the first half of the season because we took mm -hmm. a few, you know, humpings yeah. for want of a better word. Right, right. Um, and after Christmas, there was a definite switch in how we played certain mm -hmm. games, and we were a little bit more solid at the back. And I think the players probably learned about the Premier League as much as I think Bielsa learned about it as well. And I think sure. you know he adapted. And this season's going to be so interesting. It really is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's that's what I wanted to ask you about. You guys ended on a high. You beat our Spurs, and then you won out to the rest. You know, to the end of the season. What are you looking forward to? Do you guys are you looking for a Conference League, a Europa League spot? What do you think can be achieved? Ah, oh, shout to that. We're winning it. You're winning it all. <laughs> Get in. You heard it here first. I love oh, it. There you go. 1991, when we got promoted in in 1990 from the top yeah. five, we finished fourth in our first year back. Second wow. year back, we were champions. So uh, history is about to repeat itself. You heard it here first. It. Okay. That's it. All right. <laughs> I'll, come, I'll come back on here and eat a hat if we do it, I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I've got a couple of hats. We can, we can make, make love, that work. I would love to see us challenging for the top six. And I, I think that's achievable mm. realistically. If, totally. If we get off to a, a solid start. I think the start's yeah. important. Yeah, um, but I think yep. you know the the guys they brought in last year didn't really get that time to blend. So the likes sure. of Rodrigo, Lorente, Cock never really got a chance to blend at the start, and it was only yeah. at the end when they started coming through that sure. we started getting the results. So and with you know Phillips is obviously going to come back on a massive yeah. high after the Euros. I think mm -hmm. I, yeah. I'd, I'd love to see a challenge him for the top six. I think that's. Oh, that's I'd, 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 I'd like to. It's, it's it's a bit of a double edged sword. I think what happened with Phillips because I think. What uh, I mean, there was a meme going around. It was like a, a, a confused fan when people were going English. People were going, "Oh, Kevin Phillips is uh, quite good," and it's Leeds yeah. fans going, "Yeah, we've been telling you this." You know, <laughs> no one really gave him the the you know the credit he deserved, and then he really showed himself how good he is in the Euros. Do you think that because how well he was in that Euros? that you'll be able to hold on to him? Do you think, I, I, I don't know if I've not seen any transfer rumors or anything, but. 
No, I mean the good the good thing with him is he is he is and it, and it mean I know it means nothing these days as much, but he is a Leeds boy through and through. His mm. family are all in Leeds. He's very very close to his family. Gotcha. Um, I think we've definitely got this season out of him, and I think sure. realistically how we how we do will probably dictate his future. I think if yeah. we're up there challenging top six, I don't see that he'll, he'll go in. I think he loves it. I think he yeah. wants to be captain of Leeds. That's his his ultimate goal. Um, it's funny you say about the England fans thinking, oh, Cal- Calvin Phillips is quite good. There were Leeds fans four years ago saying, he's shit, get rid of him. Because he didn't have a <laughs> position. He was he was neither a 10 nor an 8. Nor a, yeah. And Bielsa came in, transformed wow. him into this defensive midfielder. And he has been an absolute yeah. re- revelation. And it was yeah. no surprise to see him at the Euros playing the way he was for us. We just, we've been watching that for three years, as you said. For mm-hmm. sure. Yeah, and with, you know, for us, we have Pochettino as the Bielsa disciple. And, you know, having seen, I would say, like, the next generation of that, it, you, I think the the familial brotherhood, uh, we're going to do this together, everybody's included and needed, is something that also keeps players around. Because as as you're talking about going on to somewhere else, you, you won't get that. I don't think you'll get that at any other club, at least right mm-hmm. now. Yeah, and I think you know it's it's quite funny how we we you know two or three of the championship winning side have just started to go now, and mm-hmm. you see that the outpouring from fans, players, coaching staff that, that yeah. these guys are going, and people are disappointed they're going, yeah. and it's like mm-hmm. it's, I've not seen that at Leeds for for years and years and years. Wow. That's I'm cool. not disappearing. I'm just going to flip my power switch on because I just oh. I didn't switch it on. Oh no, you're good. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's awesome. So <laughs> what, one of the things that uh, you have on your show is dad versus lad, at, at least for the Euros. I know yeah. in early part of your channel, it was you versus uh, your missus, I believe. You guys yeah, were no, going... Don't talk about that one. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, won't bring it up. I won't bring it up. But dad versus lad. <laughs> <laughs> so dad versus lad, you're predicting score lines. Uh, yeah. Tell our viewers how that went. Uh I mean, the, the guest fee knowledge thing as it started out was, was a good laugh. We did that all through last season and, and yep. she beat me and I've not heard the last of it since. Um, <laughs> and I thought for the Euros, because although I'm a Scotsman, a proud Scotsman, I was cheering Scotland on like the, like the rest of the uh, us Scots. Um, my boys both support England and I, I never forced them down any route. They want to sure. support England. Absolutely fine. That's where they were born. I've got no yeah. issue with it. So we had a, a lot of banter between me and and, and the boys. And uh, I said to him, I said, look, let's let's make some of this for the show. Let's do a dad v lad thing for the Euros. So yep. it just became a bit of a thing and predicting the scores. And of course, he was going with his heart, whereas I was going with my head. So that maybe helped me uh, win totally. the dad v lad. So you'll be delighted to know dad v lad is staying for the new season. Oh, is it? Uh, a different good. format. It's going to be dad v <laughs> Nice. fantasy football oh nice oh, right. yeah, yeah so we're, gonna, awesome. we're gonna mix it up a little bit it'll batter me in that <laughs> <laughs> but but you put it all on the line i feel like in terms of your uh if you were to lose you were gonna wear uh a kit that you've never put on before i've never touched one let alone put one on <laughs> so, so, so it started with the scotland england game and yep. i said to him because obviously we were expected to get Pumped three, yep. four nil. We kept getting told how we were going to get battered at Wembley. Yep. And I said, all along, I think we'll get something. I genuinely think we'll get something. I wasn't sure, sure about the other two games, but I was pretty sure we'd get something at Wembley. Sure. And yeah. so he said, if they don't beat, if England don't beat Scotland, he would wear a Scotland top. Now he's got a little bit of an advantage because he is half Scottish. So it's not quite so bad. <laughs> yeah, so right. I'll say, okay, well, we'll do the deal. If England win the Euros, I'll wear an England top for the, the show after they get to the Euros, thinking ah, it's never happening. Not a chance in my lifetime are they winning the Euros. <laughs> and then you can imagine the draw. You can you imagine the draw the after the grip. <laughs> yeah. When we, oh, when we yeah. got to penalties, I was behind the cushions. Oh, totally. <laughs> totally. You should have knew if you're looking back at history, you're talking, you should know England and penalties just don't go well, mate. Yeah. You know? I mean, to, be fair, to be fair to that, I mean, I'm not one that's, it doesn't really bother me. If they, if they win, they win. It I can't dislike them because they've actually, I have to say, probably in the last 20 years, got the most likable team they've mm. ever had as, as individuals go. Sure. And yeah. They've got Calvin. I love Calvin, so I can't right. suddenly dislike the bloke. But, yeah, right. Um, but yeah, but by the same token, I didn't want them to win it. I didn't want to be wearing the England shirt on the show. I, I couldn't. Oh, I'm totally. Sure. I'm not sure but... I'd have got back across the border. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was, I was 
learning about how much this Scotland and England, uh, you know, rivalry. Now, the way Genty explains it is for Scotland, it's England. For England, it's Germany. You know, like, so even though the rivalry is there, it's not necessarily the same for each uh, each one, country. In no, I mean, Germany, it's... In Germany's Dutch. You know, they, they don't yeah, care right. about the English yeah. either. I, I yeah. think you're right. I mean, you know, for us, that game is everything. And, you know, we, I, th I said all along, if we won that game and lost the other two, that would have been a brilliant Euros for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Were you I, upset when you watched that game that we looked like we could have won if we had a half decent stroke? Oh, I mean, I don't know. Like, because you'd have you'd watched the championship maybe a bit more than I have, but like Lyndon Dykes, he was up there to head of the ball down to someone and he, he did that that was his job but he yeah. left his shooting books at Queen Park Rangers because he missed some absolute <laughs> suitors Che Adams who'd done well for Southampton just missing absolute suitors I think if we had a half decent striker we would have got out of that that group no bother yeah I mean the the England game in particular I'll, at the end of the game I was delighted because it was a, a good result it was a result I didn't you know although you although you as a Scotsman you expect it you yeah, still think yeah. we could get done three or four nil here. If they're on their game and we're not, we're in a bit of trouble. Yeah. Um, so at the end of the game, I was delighted. It was a nil-nil draw. I woke up in the morning. I was fuming because it was, we'd never have a better opportunity to win at Wembley than we had on that yeah. Friday night. It was there to yeah. be won and we just yeah. didn't take the chances. And, you know, I think you, the Czech Republic game summed it up brilliantly for me. If we had a bad chick up front, we'd have won. Yeah. End of. No two ways about it. He was the difference between the two sides. Wow. I mean, the header... Yeah. You know, the, the 50 yarder gets a lot of press, but the header was unbelievable. I and mean, that's a fantastic header. Yeah. Um, and we haven't got uh, we haven't got a player who can do that at the moment, unfortunately. Sure. Um, sure. But we've got a little Billy. Else. There's hope. Little Billy has come through and there is hope. Yeah. We've not had one of them for a long time. I know. I know it's a thought, unfortunately, when both our best players play at the same position. And it's well, like yeah, a, there is that. It's a, it's a throw, <laughs> throw away position as well, man, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. So you talked about how your boys were allowed to support England. You know, you had no qualms with that. But when it came to Leeds, uh, do they support Leeds? How did that, you know, how did they make that kind of a choice? You know, I, I've talked about, I have a son myself and I'm like, man, do I, do I tell him he has to be a Spurs fan? Especially right now, it feels like that's a curse. <laughs> um, so yeah. So what do you do as a dad? Uh, so the the eldest one it, it was quite easy with the eldest one because it was only him at the time as a yeah. lad but he just copied what i did and sure he put the lead stop on we went to a few games and he, he was he mm. the youngest one to start with because we lived in oxford he decided yeah. he was going to be an oxford fan so mm. i said that's fine Matt. you want to be an oxford fan well i'll take you to a few oxford games not a problem sure. and we went to a few games and, and he liked it he enjoyed it and he had the tops and he was all over it then I took the eldest one to a Leeds game and he thought he was missing out and said, can I come? Say, OK, yeah. we'll take you along. And that was it. Once, he, once he'd been to Ellen Road with 30,000 in it and we, we won 4-1 that day as well, which probably helped. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, <laughs> he, and he, ironically now, of the three of us, he is yeah. by far the one who takes it the most seriously. Oh, is that right? And who <laughs> takes defeats by far the worst. Oh. So, so Kian, Kian, who was in Dad V Lab, yep. that's, that's Kian, the youngest. So yeah, he, yeah. Is, he is the one who oh, he takes in. defeats very, very badly. He is, uh, gotcha. uh, a Just proper, don't talk to him for a few hours. Like, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Never, never. <laughs> After the 6-2, when, when we got done at Man United 6-2, he was just... Uh, you just stay yeah. away from him because it just wasn't yeah. worth having that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, though, that they, they all support. So, uh, Ellen Road, what is it like to be there? Oh, just get me back as soon yeah. as you can. Because, sure. I mean, we went, the last time we went was in the November of the season. We got promoted. Uh -huh. um, it was a full house. It was the centenary game. We beat Birmingham 1 0. I uh -huh. mean, if we had told me then that, you know, it'll be almost two awesome. years before we can get back in again it's yeah. just mad and i just can't wait to get back in hug mm -hmm. random strangers <laughs> four, five rows down the front after scoring a goal i just yeah. want that back and you know ellen Road, the premier league is in for a big big surprise and i don't think they realize it yet ellen road is probably the last old school football yeah. ground that there yeah. is it's yep. a hostile hostile totally. place and there'll be some Premier League clubs who seriously will get a bit of a uh, a bit of a surprise when they turn up there next season, and it's a full house because uh, yeah. uh, yeah. it can be a, it can be an interesting place. Um, yeah. And and I think because we've waited so long for this, we've waited 15, 16 years, other right. than the eight thousand who went to the last game. 
it's yeah. going to be it's going to be louder and more hostile than ever before. So totally, uh, a, ho- a good home record incoming, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what what's what's a match that you remember the most at Ellen Road that you know over the years that you've supported? What's one that you go, man? That I'll just never forget that moment or that game. Oh, that's uh, so difficult. And in fact, there's probably two. Um, that two more poles apart, you could never get. Mm. So one was Deportivo La Coruña in the Champions League quarterfinals. Okay. So uh, La Coruña were a very, very good side at the time. Oh uh, yeah, uh, I remember back in the day. They used to be so good. They what were some team, and, uh, <laughs> and they gave it the big one that we were the worst team left in the competition. Mm. And they came to Ellen Road for the first leg, and we done them three nil. And oh, the wow. place, the ground was like a bear pit. It was literally <laughs> the loud. It was bouncing. Um, so that one always sticks in the memory. But yeah. In League One, because because we've been in League One for three seasons, Great. the last game of the season against Bristol Rovers, when we finally got up, there was mm-hmm. nearly 40,000 there for a League One game. Wow. They went, we had to win to go up. Yep. They went 1-0 up. We got a man sent off. There's 20 minutes to go, and you've goal down. You've got a full house expecting promotion. Right. And we turned it around with two goals in five minutes, and, and the wow. place just went crackers and and because i was there to do that one with one of my lads the the eldest lad sure no i've not so the youngest one's never had that moment inside ellen road and that's totally what, hopefully you'll get that this season but uh, yeah but yeah no it's um the, so probably those two so deportivo and bristol rovers two more yeah great yeah, right. parallel <laughs> universes you couldn't yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean that's what makes i mean that's what makes makes football so lovable and amazing I, I i was talking on a other show about the romance of the game right that that you could have forty thousand people at a league one gate match where you're you're down one nil like all of the support and energy of all mm. of those people in that moment, those watching at home, et cetera, right? It's just like that is so unique. And then to have that moment where you actually do get promoted, um, so special, so wonderful. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, definitely. I love that. I mean, <clears throat> all right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, Jim. No, I was just saying, like, just to be on top of the, those moments, because, like, uh, even to this day, when it, when we Celtic, my other team, get into the Champions League, and you see them in a Champions League night, and you have 60-odd thousand fans, and they're all singing, you'll never walk alone, which we do better, by the way. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, and, we still, and it's true, because if they, they cut the song off halfway through, and the fans yeah. stands, finish the song, yeah. and, but they, they sing it in unison so perfectly, you can hear all the words, and it's yeah. 60,000 people, you know, all in unison, and it's just... It's like hairs at the back of your skin. You're oh, just yeah. like, wow. Especially you get to be there, you know, and yeah, watch right. it. It's just, yeah, you get those moments like that. You're sort of talking about the romance. It's, it's all that kind of camaraderie into it, yep. you know. 100%. And and so, sometimes, actually, it's not the thing what's happening on the pitch that you necessarily remember. It's, you know, right. that Bristol Rovers game, for instance. I can remember we, we went on the pitch after the game celebrating yep. promotion. I can remember this big six foot seven giant just picking me up and hugging me like I was his <laughs> best friend that like, he'd never, never seen before. And just moments like, you know, that was what, that's got to be tw- nearly 20 years ago. I yeah. can still remember that man's face. Right. Like, if I wow. saw him today, I'd know him. Wow. <laughs> I've never met him before in my life. <laughs> that's right. That's awesome. But yeah, that, that's yeah. awesome. That's great. So yeah, so as you're looking ahead for this season, you're hoping top six and also getting back to Ellen Road, watching a match. Um, yeah, I think this <clears throat> this season for us, we're we're definitely not sure what we're expecting. Hopefully, we can get top six too. I, I feel like as a Spurs fan, I don't even understand where we're headed. If it's up or down, we just barely. I mean, as Mid I was looking, table mediocrity, man. Yeah, <laughs> <Mid> table mediocrity. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> that sounds about. Uh, I don't know if I would take that. Uh, I, I hope that we can make some progress from last season, but I think we're going to be seeing a lot of you in terms of how we are, are are doing in the table and things like that. So best of luck to you guys this season for sure. Um, thank you. Thank you very yeah. much. I would, yeah, I would share the uh, the opinion, but we want to finish in that top six. So. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> we're all would you not? Now. Would you not take conference league, mate? Do you think? I think at least if if you keep the, if you manage to keep your key players and you added some additions. I think you could your team that could win the conference league, mate, you know. Well, there was a little part of me last season when when we got to about three or four games to go and we were just right. just getting to in touch. Edge. A little part of me thought this could be fun. Because if we get in that, yeah, I genuinely think we could have won it. 
Um, mm. But then you think, actually, if we get in it, that's a lot of trips to Azerbaijan and totally. San Marino. And totally. yeah, it'd be great. And it'd be brilliant days out. But is it just going to have a negative impact? So we'll we'll part that one for now. And we'll, uh, great. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll try and go for the uh, the bigger ones, shall we say. But I would yeah. love European football again. I, I, yeah. I, I don't buy into this Europa League is is rubbish. Not, no way. Get us back in Europe as soon as yeah. possible. Definitely. Mm-hmm. That's that's awesome. <clears throat> so, okay, uh, I want to get into some of the nitty gritty about your channel in particular as well. You've got a bunch of different segments that I want to talk about, but one of my favorites is how old. Oh, how yeah. old? So tell us tell us about how old. Tell that tell us how that got started. So, um, how old is there, there's a Twitter page which um, it was '80s footballers aging badly. Uh, and it's a, it's a great Twitter, it's a great Twitter page. And over the course of last year, they were doing like a, a knockout competition of these '80s footballers. Yeah. And and I just messaged the guy and said, "Look, do you mind if I steal some of these from my show? Sure. I don't want to take them because I mean, yeah, yeah. Like, they're all out there." And right. he said, "No." He said, "Thanks for asking." He said, "Really appreciate it." He said, "Carry on." And I That's thought, right, awesome. how can I, you know, I don't want to put a picture of an old player on the screen. What can I do? So yeah. well, right, I'll get people to guess because they're never going to guess how old half of these are because it's right. just, some of them yeah. are ridiculous. I've, oh, I've tried totally. it. I've never been, never been anywhere near it. No. no. Every single week, my wife gets the sneak preview before it goes on the channel. And every week she's either a year or two years. I think she's got one right in all the time. Wow. Doing it. Wow. <laughs> this week's is a belter. This week's is really Oh, is good. it? Yeah. Oh, nice. it's, it's an absolute that. beauty. <laughs> it's so fun because it is so hard to like yeah. look at that picture and go, I think I know how old they are. Um it just it just never works. I, I that is one of the most funny things to me. I, I love that you do it. Well, These some guys of the are haircuts and oh, I know. Oh, oh, that's that's terrible. Terrible. <laughs> Dude, they look yeah. they look like they're in their fifties and sixties sometimes, and you're like, but they're they're they have this picture right here, so they can't be that old. So <laughs> there's anyway, some of them that I've, there's some of them I'm thinking of putting on that the guys are in their thirties, and I think what I'm going to have to do I'm going to have to put a caveat in and say, look. These guys are in their thirties. Now you have to guess how old they are. Yeah, genuinely, some of them they look like they're about. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I might start throwing some of them in over the over the coming weeks. Do you have any favorites or some that have been the most surprising to you? And the ones you've already done. Don't don't give anything yeah. away. Um, I mean, I love I loved the Ray Parler one from when he was fifteen. That was, that was one of my yeah. favorites because people, yeah, I mean, no. <laughs> it was just that just blew people's minds. So I did love that yeah. one. Uh, and there was a guy really early on. Um, I can't remember his name. I think it was Bolotta, Marco Bolotta or something like that. Okay. And he was 22. He played for Modena in Italy. And uh-huh. genuinely, if you had told me he was 35, I would have yeah, said, he's sure he's not 40. He <laughs> but he was 22. It was scandalous. Oh, yeah, so, awesome. oh yeah, there's some, there's some beauties. There really totally. is. Totally. Totally. Oh, and, and the good thing is it, it can go on forever. There's so many right. good ones out there. Oh, so yeah. So many good ones. <laughs> yep. And then you've also you had this competition for the managers, uh, but they were different competitions for each round. How did you pick each competition? You had a, a cake baking. You had the 100 meter dash at the end, which I feel like it was a bummer for Bielsa because he oh, was, no, he was right. Him, <laughs> yeah. Up, in, up until you make a 100 meter dash for, for Bielsa. I feel like uh, you're probably not going to. Not going to win that one, but he anyways, needed, he needed Steve Bruce, didn't he? In the final, yeah, exactly. Only, <laughs> only a Roy, a Roy Hodgson, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or something yeah, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. I mean, so I just, he... I think to be honest, I mean, I, I don't get out much, as clearly you'll see if you watch my phone. <laughs> but I just try to, when I start, probably easier to tell you why I started it and how yeah. it sort of grew from there. So when I started it, my lad sort of said, "Oh, watch this. This is the. It was the kickoff." And oh, oh, yeah. I kick off and it's great yep. and it's serious football chat. It's a, it's probably one of the better serious football chat ones out there. Sure. Um, but I looked at it and thought, there's so many people doing that. I don't know yeah. if I want to do that. I thought, sure. well, how can I how can I make mine different and, and get mm-hmm. people bought into it? So I sort of sat down with him and said, look, this is what I'm thinking of doing. And he went, oh, he said, there's nothing like that. So yeah. I, I modelled it very loosely on Soccer AM, and and I'm, I mean really sure. loosely. Yeah, so yeah, I don't yeah. know if you see. Do you see any Soccer AM, Anthony? Have you, do you know? Are you familiar with that program? <laughs> no, only if you catch clips on Twitter or something like that. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, if you go back 15 years, it was huge. It really okay. was a, a massive Saturday morning football magazine show, if you like. Sure. Which was similar to what I do in terms of there was various sketches, various little bits and pieces, and yeah. that's what I tried to 
not replicate, but kind right. of do something similar to that to make totally. them a little bit more unique. Yep. Um, and, and that's kind of how it, it came about. So I was looking for something to tie in around the Euro, some sort of competition. Sure. I thought, all right, Premier League managers, what can I do with them? And yep. then by chance, I was on YouTube and It's a Knockout was on. There was an It's a Knockout clip on okay. YouTube. Yep. An old 70s BBC program where uh -huh. folks used to dress up in inflatable suits and try and get across waters in canoes and stuff. And thought, how can I turn this around? So, so I just came up with five categories and thought, right, nice. put it all in and see how it works. And yeah, it was, it, it was a bit of fun. And you know, oh, people totally. joined it with a vote in. And yeah, uh, it was, well, it was I love specifically the cake one you <laughs> you had such good reasons for who should win like um oh man who was it uh he's at west ham right now i'm forgetting his name david moyes david, david moyes no, yes moyes. yes just cake, the cake, the cake. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be a solid cake and exactly. nothing more than a solid there's cake. no frills no nothing and i was like actually that's the kind of cake i would like personally <laughs> So, <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, so fun grand would have when you'd go to a flat. You know? <laughs> so yeah. good. So, so good. But yeah, Do you so, know, I was just thinking, because oh, you're saying Soccer AM, um, like for our the audience, you know, who are most yep. Spurs fans, the see the Sky, the Sky Sports Reporter does the Spurs content, you know, when they interview Spurs players, plus they yep. do the Tottenham away. That that guy's from Soccer AM. Um. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, that's uh, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know sense. what I'm talking about? Yeah, yep. so like there's still remnants of them about, but yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, uh, you they're can they're see like the, around. yeah, but you can see the, uh, you definitely. I think you've uh, adapted and made it your own thing, but yeah, totally. definitely. Well, yeah, I over did, here. Uh, at one stage, I did have the strap line, um, the self-proclaimed shit soccer AM. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I did drop that. I, I, I've changed it to the show that doesn't take itself too seriously. There you go. <laughs> That's nah. awesome. That was no, your yeah. Scottishness in you. You know, you're being humble and being nice. I know, yeah. <laughs> we're shy and we know we are. <laughs> yeah, exactly, mate. It's a kick over that. Yeah, over here, you know, there's just it's just not as big, right? So there there isn't so much playfulness like like you're talking about. But there is a show called The Men in Blazers that's on NBC uh Sports and they they'll do different things. They'll they'll find like crazy things that have happened during matches. I remember there was like a missed throw in and like when Aurier, I don't know if you remember this, Aurier had like three bad throws in the same yeah. match or something <laughs> like that. Right. So they were like highlighting just like crazy things that were happening or a guy would try to do one of those snot rockets or whatever to get all over his shirt, oh. you know, so <laughs> those kinds of things. But see, and the so, worst thing for, for the likes of me is yeah. because YouTube is so Oh, hot I know. You can't show anything. Clip. I can't show anything. I did mm -hmm. put, there was a, there was a great clip of German football when the guy uh -huh walked it into the net and headed it over the line uh -huh. and caused like mass uproar and totally. i put that in the show and the bundesliga reported me no, that, isn't that crazy i know 100 odd views and you're reporting totally. it on me, but it's just, I, like, I had something similar uh, uh i don't know how long ago it was now but i used a six second clip i commented about it and i was manually reported Meaning Manually. that they, meaning that they like had, I don't know how they found my video. I'm like a nobody on here, and they manually reported me. I'm like, I'm, I'm not even. Uh, I don't know. I took the audio out. It felt like I had abided by all the rules, uh, yeah. but it didn't matter anyway. So, nah, it's just sad. but I think so what you're good. doing is so fun. That is quite frustrating because there's so much you could do if you could put clips in. Obviously, yep. I could take oh, it totally. to another level, but you well, just, of course, oh, yeah, you have to yeah. hold it back. So, but yeah, we make work what we can do. Yep, exactly. totally. So, all right, one more little segment I want to highlight, and then I want to get to your kind of your main segments, yeah. is the little knob of the week. And how how did you manage to get the celebrity that you got to bring in? I mean, it <laughs> seems like not everyone could afford. Oh, guess the fans. <laughs> there it is. There it is. <laughs> There's Ted. Ted from the oh, movies. Oh, oh, Ted. Oh, so. Jim T and Anthony. Who oh, oh, the bloody hell are they? Well, they, they do a different podcast. They've asked you on, mate. I don't get paid to come on here. That's actually true. <laughs> that is what he's like. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I, because obviously I was doing it on my own, Yep. I thought I've got to find a way of, other than the Zoom calls, of, right. of making it a little bit more interactive. So yep. this teddy bear has been lying around. What, don't. <laughs> no, I've got to go down, <laughs> down there. Um, he's been lying around in the room for... For years, it was my yep. daughter's old teddy bear. And I thought, right, okay, what can I do with this? And 
the idea of pretending that he was Ted from the movies, but he right. couldn't speak. So he has to speak through the medium of my ear. Yeah, and, totally. and from there, it just kind of, it developed. And it, I mean, it became like a bit of a, a thing. I mean, I can't, I couldn't ever drop him now. Right? Yeah, right. I, just, I, I can't right. leave him out now, which is, yeah. is ultimately quite frustrating because you think, I want to take it on now, but I <laughs> just can't leave him out. So, mm-hmm. he's, and the good thing is you can, you can be quite sly because the bits where you really want to hammer totally. people, Right, you just do it through Put the medium. Yeah, it was a <laughs> stuffed <me>. animal. <laughs> it was a stuffed animal so, over here yeah. that said it wasn't me. I don't know. I mean, I, I was going to go really controversial this week with the whole Everton thing, but I think I'll leave it alone. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So now your main segment though is uh, uh, zooming in, and you bring on musical guests to talk about football. Uh, yeah. T- talk a little bit about that. How do you get your guests? Like, uh, how did that come about? Twitter is the joy. Twitter oh, is the yeah. ultimate, it's the ultimate joy. That's so awesome. It started out really, again, it was about the interaction and getting more people involved. So I started off with getting my lad on to pick his best five aside sure. team. And thought, okay, how can we develop this from here? And music and football for me go hand in hand. I love my music as much as I love my football. Totally. So the two are very, very connected. And I think a lot of people that like football love music as well and, yeah. I, and i do think the two go hand in hand there's a lot of bands that are mad on football so yeah. mm-hmm. i'll just put a shout out on twitter look is there any bands that want to come on and talk about music and sure. i thought right how can i make it that little bit more unique and i said right the five aside team so yeah. they get to pick their their favorite five aside team that they've seen play live that's the only deal they have sure. to have seen them play live um and we had one or two bands on and they were they were great and of course they would then say oh try these guys they, these yep. are great and before you know it, you, you you just snowball. I mean, I've got a list of probably another 10 bands that have, have you know, two wow. or three have even asked to come on. That's um, awesome. The, the guys that are on Saturday's show. So yeah. they, we're, this is Thursday. So yep. I don't know when yours goes out, but yeah. it's a Saturday show. Tomorrow. Right. Okay. Yeah. So yep. there's two lads from a, a band called Greedy Soul. Okay. Now they are being tipped to be a really, really big band going forward. Um, nice. And I've just had them on right at the start. So I just wow. just putting these all tucked away nicely for the future mm-hmm. when they hit it big and I can go, remember these guys. That's right. <laughs> um, and you've got video it. proof. Yeah, they, awesome. they love it. They love talking about their music. It gives yep. them a chance to, to sell oh, yeah. their music to the public. And yep. what musicians love, as, as I've found out, is they love talking about football. Totally. Um, you know, I don't know if you remember the Doctor and the Medics who had the Spirit in the Sky song. He, uh-huh. he came on a show. Oh, so really? one of the one of a friend of mine who, oh, wow. who kind of knew him yeah. um, and got him in contact and I had him on the show and he was, oh. he was great fun. Absolutely mm. brilliant. But so, the dream yeah. is still Liam Gallagher. That is the ultimate dream. So <laughs> Liam, that, uh, if you're watching top. this, my friend, get on. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. Yeah. That's the but dream. I think, yeah, I think what you're saying is that also, I mean, like it's ingrained in football because yeah. we're, we're fans, football chants. I mean, yeah. you yeah. can't get more oh. music and football intertwined <laughs> than that. And that is... That is one of the parts of the game when you're there at the, you know, at the stadium is singing those those chants right. and you, they, it's yeah, and you just have weird things like you wonder who comes up with these chants, where they come from, and they, they just seem to rise out of like the ether, you know, and then everyone <laughs> starts singing them and everyone follows along, and yeah, I mean, it's just great, you know. It's, it's beautiful. Like, well, that, well, it's funny you should say that because that is some of that's bugged me for years. Is so so somebody obviously comes up with this chant initially. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. you know, there, there's a chant that might go on for a, a whole verse and a chorus, whatever. So yeah. somebody comes up with initially. So, A, how do they get every other bugger singing it? Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. B, how do they get the next person to know all the words that he's put in the song? <laughs> C, how uh, do you get the third person in? <laughs> right. No, no. You get the whole round doing it. It's just mind totally. blowing. It's just yeah. absolutely incredible. You, want, you must wonder how many tramps are like, ch- tramps, sorry, chants <laughs> that have uh, <laughs> fallen near the wayside, you know, because they haven't really caught on and they weren't yeah. catching. I mean, it's yeah, it's what a it, feeling. There's, there's very clever people out there, totally. Mm. And what a feeling, right? To be like, you start singing the song, and then you've got all these other people singing, and maybe week after week, it's just so cool. Uh, yeah. what what yeah. kind of music do you uh personally enjoy? Are, are, like, is there a certain style of music that you love the most, or are you kind of eclectic in, in the way that you listen to music? Well, I'm a bit of an old gear, aren't I? So, I'm uh, <laughs> I'm very much uh, I'm very much your oasis. Uh-huh. Uh, Stone Roses, but I do have to say, doing this show yeah. and, and the bands on has actually kind of revitalized my music love. And I've really? got into a lot of new bands that I probably uh-huh. wouldn't have got into. Mm. The likes of DMAs, the Snuts. I yeah. love the Snuts. I mean, the Snuts 
if anybody out there has not listened to the snuts go and Check download the album trust me they are magnificent <coughs> that's um, awesome little, yeah. Scot- little scottish band who just hit the big <laughs> time massively and you know they beat uh, they beat Dua Lipa to number one in the album chart as well. Is that right? A very, following that's a very good. big Twitter campaign that uh, nice. was launched. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, awesome. But yeah, it's brilliant, and 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 it's really I have to say it's, it reinvigorated my love of music, and I've got yeah. into so many new bands. Totally um, doing it, but uh, give me an Oasis reunion tomorrow, and I'll be a man booking a day off <laughs> five laptops, trying to get tickets. <laughs> do you know, do you know- it was just funny if you mentioned the uh, Stone Roses. The, the Celtic have uh, a chant based on a Stone Roses song for uh, Ons and Edward. They've got a song, I Want to Be Adored. Yeah. But they change it to, I Want to Be Edward. <laughs> that's his first name. It's nice. just those, those, those little changes that you're talking about, you know? It's perfect. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> now, do you play or sing at all? Like, do you, do you play any instruments or anything like that? Uh, the triangle when I was at school, that was about it. <laughs> Um, I've been very difficult for, for some, some uh, to get very into, difficult. It? Tuning it is some some battle. <laughs> yeah, totally. uh, the um, I've been known to bow out the odd karaoke number, but that's about as much as it goes. Nice. I've, got, nah, I've got no musical talent at all. I just I like just listening wondered. to it, and uh, that, that's oh. about it as, as far as it goes. My daughter, on the other hand, is oh yeah, really that's insane. awesome. She gets paid to sing. Oh, no. there you go. That's you great. don't get it from me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, over here on our channel, I. Uh, in in the the lowest of the lows what it felt like dur- during the season i changed you know we we sing we can't smile without you i changed it to i can't smile and watch you uh and i just <laughs> that's how i felt and i just was playing my guitar and singing on here it was just like uh it was one of the most fun things people were t- like pretending like they had their lighters out on, <laughs> on the um, yeah, super super fun <clears throat> so yeah um i i also uh, want to talk wh- one more thing, the little shouty man. I think that's been something you've done from the the, the very beginning. Um, tell us about the little shouty man and what is the most on your nerves right now when it comes to football? So the little shouty man, he was he was in episode, I think it was in episode one or two. He was one of the very yep. first things that I did. So, And it was really ingenious idea that I am a little man and I was just <laughs> going to be shouty. Um <laughs> And so it's just me. It's my opportunity to have a rant, but yep. put it under a bit of a guise of something. And um, there's been various things that he's ranted about. What yep. he tends to rant about are not the important things. So it tends to be like, you know, the strapping on the wrists for no reason. Yeah. Um, socks pulled up over the knees has been a yep. particular one. But then every now <laughs> and then he'll delve into the serious ones. Um, yep. And at the moment, I mean, I could do it every week at the moment, is the racism on social media because oh, totally. it's driving me <laughs> I, I won't swear, but it's driving me yeah. crackers. And, yeah. and I really could bang that every week at the moment. I'm not going to because I just think yeah. you, you end up getting on people's nerves with it. And, sure. Mm. Um, but I, I like to make it a bit more fun. So I try not to do too many serious ones. So sure, I sure. try to find like, you know, the draft excluder in the wall last week. I mean, that mm. one, I mean, that's the kind yeah. of thing I love <laughs> ranting about. It's <laughs> nonsense, really. It shouldn't right. get on your nerves quite so much. But it's the stupidest thing in the world. It Why is. would you need a draft excluder in the wall? It never goes under the wall. It's, it's so mad. funny. When you when you started to like logically explain why that was a poor <laughs> idea, like you're like, how many times? You're like, yeah, okay, he could go under. But does it actually go in? Like how many times does it <laughs> actually go in the back of the net? Then you start to go, yeah, I don't know. I don't think I don't think I've ever seen it go in the back I think, of the net. I think I've seen one, I think, that I can remember. But it was was uh, it on a highlight reel or did you actually see it? <laughs> exactly that. It was on a highlight reel. So exactly. of all the ga- of all the games there are on a weekend, right? Uh, let's say uh, let's say there's two thousand games for sake of yeah. argument. How yep. many free kicks go under a wall and into a net? Totally. It's just a I know. Moment. It's, it's I think funny. the last time I saw it was a. Uh... Thompson for Celtic, the English guy, you know, he used to play. Uh, yeah, Alan Thompson. Yeah, well, we yeah, had him for a little while. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, he used to he used to uh, kick the ball under the the free kick. Uh, oh, under really? The wall. Yeah, yeah, he did that a couple of times. But, Successfully. I mean, that was, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, that's early two thousands at max. You know, yeah, right. Like, it's, crazy, it's, it's been a while. I mean, yep. I, either that. I mean, I thought of a new one after I finished recording. Yeah. I actually thought of another way you can combat it without this stupid man lying on the floor. Why don't you just put a two man wall behind the four man wall? Because then you know, at least yeah. they're stood up. They can cover people either side. They're, they're oh. what they should do. <laughs> <laughs> you know what they should do. Start right. with them again, Anthony. I know. <laughs> I know. You know what I was thinking? Sometimes the way they lie down there, you know, they're like models. The way they're like laying there until until they are like getting ready to get hit with a soccer ball, potentially, or a football. 
Oh, yeah. but, those, those, those brave people that face it, you know, rather yeah, than those guys the, are nuts. Those junk facing it rather than away with it. Look, totally. guys. <laughs> but I can just I can just picture some advertiser right now just thinking about like how could we get one of those models to wear our stuff? <laughs> and the they, they, the exactly, exactly. <laughs> so okay, last thing. Yeah. Uh, Stoke Gabriel and Torbay Police FC. You started covering this merger. Yes, there they are. <laughs> Tell us about that. Tell us about how uh, you're, you started covering that. And I love the hat, by the way, as well. <laughs> <laughs> so it start, so State, Stoke Gabriel last season. Yep. So it became, it became quite big national news. It, it, it was on sort of BBC websites and Sky websites. Their first 12 games... They conceded like something like 140 odd goals. Wow. So what had happened was they they lost a lot of players. They sure. had no financial budget, but they were playing at quite a, a high sort of non-league level. It was like mm -hmm. probably four leagues below the conference. Okay. Which is still, you know, still an okay standard. So there's sure. some decent teams. And in that neck of the woods, what you tend to find is the better players don't travel very far because mm. it's so far down in sort of Devon and Cornwall that they, they tend to stay there. They're not interested in going to play for mm -hmm. teams up in the conference. So you get some good sides that play at that level. So sure. they were just getting battered week in, week out. And I thought, right, OK, well, let's let's try and get behind them, give them a bit of support and have some fun with them. Sure. So of course, like when they were scoring goals, we were celebrating goals like they were nothing on earth. And <laughs> we had the manager on here and a couple of players on, on zooming in. And we had a bit of fun with them. Yep. So as it grew through the season, I, I got to know the guys down there and we yeah. got to talking and, and they sort of said to me, look, there's some big news coming up in the summer. We'll tell you about it the minute it hits. So the, the day before they announced it, they actually phoned me and told me, which I was quite, really? quite yeah. touched. You know, yeah. quite touched. They phoned me and told me that they were merging with Torbay Police FC. Yeah. And the idea yeah. being was that Torbay Police FC have got a lot of volunteers Okay. Stoke Gabriel have got a good setup, a nice little ground, and they've sure. got a high position in this level of league. So the two are going to merge. Yep. But the the really serious, crafty, naughty person inside of me just thought, I am going to have so much fun with it. <laughs> and they merge, they merge with a police force. Police force. And all. Yeah, it was like a gift from the gods. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so of course, and then they sent me the two videos. So the Lee yeah. Hendry one is is perfectly yep. sensible, and he's like, you know, good luck and. He's the club president, the right. Jimmy Bullard one. I mean, to this day, I don't know what Jimmy Bullard is actually saying. I've listened to it 20 times and he's clearly pissed in some yeah. Indian restaurant or Chinese restaurant or wherever he is filming yeah. it. And he's clearly, somebody's holding up a piece of paper. And he's, I mean, if you try and hear him say Torbay, please, it's just no, he, hilarious. It, right? it doesn't <laughs> seem like, it, it seems like he's being asked to do something he doesn't really want to do, but he's willing to do it, but then he messes it up, but he doesn't want to do it again. Yeah. So that's yeah. just, that's just the end of it. There's the video. <laughs> well, I know that the guys down there, they, they weren't too pleased with how it came out. So they've not yeah. really used it very much. Sure. But of course, what I do now, now but it's, but a, it's get... if things are bad or if things are, are a bit miserable or people need cheering up, bam, here's Jimmy. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and uh, and we, yeah, we'll use that through the season. That's not a problem. But, <laughs> So we're gonna. The idea is at some stage this season, hopefully, to get down there and present a show from, from yeah. down at the ground and, and have a bit of fun with them down there in person. So my oh, question was: Do they use all of the letters? Do they use S G T P F C? Is that what they use? Yeah, that's gonna. They that really is, do. Uh, that will be their thing. So, um, <laughs> so there's one. New, so there's a new feature we're gonna do next year. I'll, I'll let you into it. There you go. This. So if you're watching right, this, you're getting press. a real exclusive here. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. We're, doing, we're gonna do three. It's three competitions. It can be called the Road to Wembley. Okay. So in each competition, we are gonna start in the extra preliminary round with a team, okay. and we will follow whoever wins all the way through to the final. With the nice. idea being that we're going to try and get to a few of the games en route to the final. Oh, sweet. So you have the FA Vars, the FA Trophy, and the FA Cup. Yep. So in the FA Vars, Stoke Gabriel and Torbay Police only went and got a bloody bye in the first round. So <laughs> so what I've had to do is pick the other teams that they've got in the <laughs> So they're sure. my, my preliminary round team. And we'll just follow it all the way through the competition. So awesome. you know, in the Very FA good. Cup, we're going to choose my local team. Uh -huh. um, so Har Harbour Town, they don't know yet, but they're going to be chosen as our FA nice. Cup team. So we'll start with them and we'll follow them all the way through and, until we get to the final. And we'll just wow. have a bit of fun with it along the way. And totally. hopefully, yeah, the idea will be to get either fans of, of some of those clubs on, on to yep. chat about it or mm. even better players, management, committee, totally. whatever. So somebody connected with the club would be would be great. But yeah, we'll have, some, sure. we'll have some fun with that along the way. And of course, it'll run all season. So Yeah. 
Yeah, That's it's awesome. good to show, uh, you know, I think uh, a lot of us in the you know, football sphere will just look at the top five leagues in Europe, not even like outside of Europe, but it's, it's like, you know, and it, it's so, uh, like, soulless. It's so corporate, you know, yeah, a, lot yeah, of the, a lot of the gun. And I think what you're, when you when you focus on that, like, you know, the Detroit City, and right. uh, you've got like real community led football, that's where you get the, the true kind of, Real passionate oh, yeah. fans and really Definitely. good, uh, good stories, you know. And so it's good to shine a light on the smaller teams, totally. you know. Well, there's no, just... there's no show, right? It's like if you, if I support Detroit City FC, you guys have never heard of Detroit City FC, right? It's like that's yeah. just from my heart. I just love this club yeah. that what they do for the city of Detroit, how they've they've cared for the. I mean, in, especially in America, the the youth system has been in dire need of help for for football here, and they've got a little bit of a youth system going in the different counties around the city, and so that's what I love about about my little club. And so I'm imagining these, you know, uh, these two teams that have merged together with all their fan bases coming together. It's it's awesome. It's so oh, sweet. Great. It, we'll have we'll have some real fun with it. And and the good thing is, hopefully, from a, a playing side of things, they'll have a much stronger season on the pitch as well. Totally. Because they'll have the budget to, to right. hopefully improve things a little bit, but yeah. without losing sight of the fact that they are a community club which right. wants to bring kids through the age groups. And that, yep. that's essentially what it's all about. It's, you know, who can bring along the next Calvin Phillips for sake of that's argument, right. um into those local communities and, and go on to, to play at the top level. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. So well, Detroit City, are they are they MLS or are they are No, so they're not in the MLS. MLS uh is like tier one. Uh Detroit City are like three. Right. So okay. the way they just became professional. Um, and actually this little uh, guy over here, they, you know, to, to make it through COVID, they sold 10% of their share. So I actually bought two shares uh, to become a part owner. Uh, and so, yeah, this, in, if you can see kind of in the background, this is actually the stadium. Uh, yeah. the, so, and they'd say supporter built and they, they basically took a, a stadium that was built in uh, 1936. It's right in the heart of the city, and um, they are renovating it and continuing to to um, make it nicer and nicer. They've redone the pitch. They've redone all the stands. One of the stands was condemned; like you couldn't even be on it. And uh, once they're done with it, they're going to give it to the city for all the the community schools. They they already use it anyway for their their different sporting events and things. But they're just so involved, right, in in the community and making sure that the community does well. Um, and so, yeah, so they started in 2012. And I, I just heard about them, uh, I, like just a year after that in 2013, but immediately bought season tickets and uh, yeah. have been supporting them ever since. Oh, it's a great. It's an outsider looking in. It's a great atmosphere when I watch the games with the, and Anthony's get you know getting us to watch them, and you just you know. the fans are really uh, you, you know you can see the passion in them. They've got this big smoke colours yeah. going off constantly, and yeah. you know they've got the guys with the blowhorns just you know shouting to the fans to give yeah. them chance. And there's a train that goes by. It's just like oh, yeah. so weird. You never would never <laughs> see that in the Premier League, you know. No, nope. and it, it's yeah, it's definitely a good atmosphere, and they play some decent football, you know. Yeah, the, yeah, they've like, got <clears throat> Trevor James is their uh, GM and head coach, and and he he had actually coached in the MLS. I uh, coached Beckham. Uh, he was a scout for. Uh, Barcelona and some other uh, different places and so he's he's well connected and yeah. he has been huge for the football side now we got a u23 team we've got a women's side we've got uh, you know youth teams and it's just it's just really cool to to see that happening over here but I could talk all day about that Reedy we want to uh, let you plug everything that you're doing uh, what where can we find you obviously we can find you on YouTube and we're gonna put a link in the description for your channel we'll probably put a image over here so people can see what it looks looks like but where else can people find you uh so you beat the first man we're on twitter we're on instagram we're on facebook it's all under beat the first man okay um you'll tell the emblem it looks like a, a Leeds united badge but it's just yep. got beat the first man written down there rather than lufc <laughs> uh, <laughs> nice. uh, the show goes out every single saturday eight o'clock in the morning uh we yeah. put it online nice and early for those that are just waking up cup of coffee perfect. in bed perfect time to watch a show that's um, right um there will be a one week break and then we're coming back with a bang in two weeks time. So there's a show Saturday, Uh then there's a week with no show. And then we're coming back with a bang with a whole host of new features. We've got literally probably four or five new features coming back, running into the new season. And I can feel American corner coming on Detroit. I can feel it. 
yeah, yeah. Got, my brain was working. I'm thinking, hello. That's awesome. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, but, uh, well, but yeah, so, you know, please pop across and watch. And uh, totally. there's only a couple of rules. And, you know, I've explained yes. this to you. We don't do editing. So yes. what gets no. recorded stays in. If I mess up, I mess up and it stays on. That's uh, right. You have to give me likes. Yep. No likes are not a good thing because it <laughs> massages me head and me, me ego. Um, and that's it, really. The rest that's of it. It. Just, just don't take it. To, don't come over expecting a silky smooth show that's right. with no mistakes and serious oh. football chat because it's not that. Yep. It's just, <laughs> it's just fun. a bit of fun. Yeah. If you, if you want to laugh for an hour, that's it. It's, probably the place to head. I'll laugh with some football and I think yeah it's that's what I really uh I think what our audience will uh, enjoy totally. about it. What I enjoy about it is the authenticity that yep. comes across, you know, and it's yeah as you're saying you know editing but like you're just it's just you and it's just uh, you're a you're a very good lovable character. So totally me, me, me and my production team of that's me. right <laughs> <laughs> and Ted <laughs> oh yeah Ted of course and yeah Ted. he's, he's awesome. back in bed now that's right. No, thank you for that, Jinty. That that means a lot. Thank you very much. Oh, that's yeah. that's all I've ever tried to do is just be me. And yeah, if yep. people like it, fantastic. And you know, if they enjoy it, mm-hmm. even better. So, Sweet. and uh, you have to repay the favour. You need to come on Zooming in one week. Yes. Yeah. So that you sounds choose, awesome. You could choose, you choose your five aside team. We'll yeah. Talk about your podcast know, online. As show. you were saying it, I was thinking about. It. I was like, man, the the players I've seen, I've actually had a, a couple of cool opportunities. So, um, that that sounds great. Have us on. Look out Sounds and uh, watch out for Ted this week. There's a little bit of an MLS twist. Oh, oh all not right. Because, not because of you, but it, uh, it just happens to be. Coincidentally. Yeah. Coincidentally. Awesome. But, Perfect. Uh, yeah. So uh, look out for that on Saturday. Awesome. Well, <laughs> That's going to wrap it up for us. Thanks so much for watching. And please uh, subscribe to Beat the First Man. Check out his content. I'm sure you're going to have a lot of laughs. And uh, as we like to say here, as ever, it was great talking with you. And uh, the the oh, he's cutting it. Yeah. Oh, am I cutting out? Sorry. Oh, you're all right. Yeah, you're back. <laughs> you're all right. Getting, you're quite a face. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. It was quite a face. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, uh, <laughs> it was like that. Anyway, he has transformed the footballing side of the club. Is what I was trying to say.